Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj, for giving your valuable time and association in this Bhakti Sangha conference call. We are really fortunate to hear from you, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Hare Thank you. Hare Krishna, my obeisance is to you and to all the devotees. Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 5 Chapter 18 the residence of Jabodweep offer prayers. This is verse 36. Yasya Sarupam Kavayo Vipaschito Unesha Drovo Shiva Jata Vedasam Mathnati Matna Manasa Didriksavo Uyam Kritar Tire Namam Hiratmane. Translation, by manipulating a fire-generating stick, great saints and sages can bring forth the fire lying dormant within wood. In the same way, O oh Lord, those expert in understanding the absolute truth try to see you in everything, even in their own bodies. Yet you remain concealed. You're not to be understood by indirect processes involving mental or physical activities. Because you are self-manifested only when you see that a person is wholeheartedly engaged in searching for you, do you reveal yourself. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Shri Prabhupada's purport. The word Kritartai means by performing ritualistic ceremonies to satisfy the demigods. The word vipashtita is explained in the Taitariya Upanishads as follows Satyam Gyanam Manantam Brahmam Yoveda Nihitam Guhayam Paramam Brahmam Sosritu Slavan Kamam Sahad Brahmana Vipashtiteti. After many births and deaths, he was actually a knowledge surrenders unto me. When one understands that the Lord is situated in everyone's heart and actually sees the Lord present everywhere, he has perfect knowledge. The word Jataveda means fire, which is produced by rubbing wood. In Vedic time, learned sages could bring forth fire from wood. Jataveda also indicates the fire in the stomach, which digests, digests everything we eat and which produces an appetite. The word Guda is explained in the Sveta Svatara Upanishad. Eko Devam Sarvabhutesham Guda. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is understood by chanting the Vedic mantras Sarvavyapi Sarvabhutantar Atma. He is all pervading and he is within the heart of living entities. Karma Dyaksa. Sarvabhuta Dvishva Saha. He witnesses all activities of the living entities. Shakshi Chaita Gevalo Nirunas Cham. The Supreme Lord is the witness as well as the living force. Yet he is transcendental to all material qualities. Omagyantu Nirandasyan Gina Jina Salakaya Chaksun Mulitam Vena Tasma Shigu Vena Maha. Sri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapita Menavutala Ismayam Rupa Kidamayam Dadati Svam Dadati Kam. 
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vas Nivar Mata Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So uh, before I begin I must say I have I'm in a little bit of a tight schedule because I'm on my way to the airport soon and so the class will be no more than uh, 25 to 30 minutes. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be difficult. Um, here, anyway, what we're seeing or hearing is actually um, Krishna is Gupta. One of his names is Gupta. That means he's hidden. Although he's present, he's hidden. But he says in the Bhagavad Gita that uh, the secret of knowing me is not something that is kept secret, it's revealed. When one really, as it says here, when, when one wholeheartedly engages in searching for you, do you reveal yourself? So the word wholeheartedly is very important to understand. That means completely or with complete desire to attain Krishna. Well, Krishna is not cheap. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. He's the cause of all causes. Although we hear so many of his activities and he appears to be so easily available, he is in one sense, but in another sense, that availability is a requirement of intense desire. And that's mentioned here that in order to uh, receive Krishna's special mercy. And that means that he appears to the devotee in the devotee's life in a very, very uh, direct way. Uh, the devotee can associate with Krishna, can talk with Krishna, can, uh, can ask him questions and Krishna will also end. In other words, the devotee develops a very intimate relationship with Krishna. Only when, when that devotee understands that um, Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Riddeshaj, in other words, he is in the hearts of all living beings, and there is no other goal but him. When we make Krishna our goal in life, and to make Krishna the goal in life means to absorb oneself in the service of the Lord. And therefore, it says that. Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives a little indication. Manaso geho, deho geho, yokichu mo arpilu tu apade nandakishore. He says, my home, my family, my possessions, my very body, everything, it's yours, Lord. Therefore, I, I take everything and I use it in your service. Everything belongs to you. I belong to you. And this is actually the reality of life, that we don't belong to anything in this world. Due to our bodily designation, or our, by having a particular type of body, we connect with certain persons, with certain families, with certain countries, with certain uh, nationalities. But it's all due to the body. When the body is not there, none of these things have any any reality in existence. So as soon as we take on a material body, we also take on the extensions of the body. And therefore, we identify with these as our friends, relatives, kins, kins, activities, particular type of body we have. But it's all um, what we say, uh, an illusion, because we're not the body. <laughs> We are something different than the body. Of course, we make these temporary arrangements so we can function in the material world and take care of our bodily needs. But we are something completely different. We are Krishna's parts and parcel. Jivaya Surupai Krishna Nitya Das. And when we understand that, and our relationship is only with Krishna in the real sense, that means that whatever we have 
and whatever we're doing should be dealt and used in the service of the Lord. And that will bring one to closer and closer to Krishna in a very direct way. Because Krishna is there. He's with us every moment, but he remains, as it says here, as fire is hidden in wood. The great sages can bring out the fire that is dormant in the wood. Some of those who are expert in understanding the absolute truth can see you in everybody's body and everywhere at the same time. And they see everything in existence in relationship to you. Therefore, they always see you either directly or indirectly in everything and in everyone. And that is Krishna consciousness and that is the reality of existence. Um, the non-devotees, the materialists, they visualize things separate from the Lord and they think the things that they have or the things that they, they want actually belongs to them. And therefore they struggle and they're never happy. They're never satisfied by, by how much they get because it has nothing to do with them. It's just, it just gives some temporary relief to the body or some, uh, some very uh, quick titillization to the mind. But it doesn't go to the heart or to the soul. Uh, what goes to the heart and soul is Krishna is in the heart and we are the soul that's sitting in the heart along with Krishna. And so two birds on the same tree, one is looking outward and the other one is looking at the bird looking outward. One bird looking outward, that is the living entity. And the one looking at the bird looking outward is Krishna. But he's reminding, don't look outward, look towards me. And that's Krishna within the heart and he dictates. And how does he dictate? He dictates through the spiritual master who is, the, who is known as Antaryami or the external manifestation of super soul. What is in the heart that Krishna is telling us, that same, that same uh, Krishna manifests himself as his representative to tell us the same thing in an external way because we can't hear a Krishna in the heart unless we reach the stage of complete and complete mind and sense control. When the mind and senses are completely fixed in control, then the super soul is a reach. And that's mentioned in the Gita, the happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor, the dualities of the material energy now amalgamate into a oneness. Therefore, one who reaches that stage of complete mind and sense control uh, doesn't, is not affected by the dualities of material life, nor do they give much importance to these dualities also. So bringing forth the fire, that bring, bringing out the fire by the expert sages means the, the process of pure devotional service. And so what, what's indicated here is wholeheartedly engaged in searching for you. In other words, the whole process of devotional service, in one sense, to use a very simple line, is chasing after Krishna. Uh, trying to find Krishna, trying to serve him in such a way that he becomes pleased and he reveals himself to his devotees. You can imagine, imagine you're, you're in Vrindavan and you're standing in the, the forest of Vrindavan and it's not night yet, but it, it, is, it is twilight and it's coming to the, not twilight, but it's dusk where um, it's about to become very dark. And uh, you're looking for Krishna and you know he's somewhere in the forest because you saw him go into the forest earlier and now you've came into the forest looking for him. And then uh, you're looking this way and in that way you're look, checking behind the trees, you're going behind the, the little hills and you're going this way. And then all of a sudden you see Krishna and there he is, he's smiling. And you find, I found Krishna. And then you go towards Krishna. And Krishna turns around and goes in another direction. And pretty soon you lose sight of him again. 
and then you continue to try to find him. And then every once in a while, you feel like you're getting close. And then Krishna appears and he smiles and then he hides himself again. And then again, you increase your enthusiasm to find him and you continue looking this way and that way, but you can't find him. And you keep trying and you keep trying. Finally, when there's no energy left and you exhausted all your energy trying to find him, Krishna appears and says, here I am. <laughs> and he has a big smile and he welcomes you. And then you're with Krishna. And so when we give everything, then we can get Krishna. Prabhupada said, Krishna doesn't see how much you give. He sees what you hold back. <laughs> so how much are we holding back in our pursuit of Krishna consciousness? will be the anchor that keeps us from getting Krishna. So there, therefore, the process is to wholeheartedly want Krishna. And when we wholeheartedly want Krishna, Krishna will help you through the spiritual master, through the scriptures, through the association of devotees, to help you understand deeper what you need to give up in order for you to get Krishna. Bhakti Tirtha Swami, he made a very nice statement. And he asked the devotees to make this statement as a prayer. And it actually is a prayer. And that prayer, he actually made this um, statement in front of the entire GBC body that were present in the Srimad Bhagavatam class, which he gave during the Mayapur festival with uh, hundreds of devotees on, on site, plus uh, um, you know, hundreds of other devotees listening in from the local medias. He said, make this prayer, and this is the best of all prayers. And the prayer goes, my dear Lord, whatever I need to become fully Krishna conscious, please bring it on. And my dear Lord, whatever I don't need that is blocking me from becoming Krishna conscious, please take it away. Now that's a very direct and powerful prayer. Give me whatever I need, take away everything that is blocking me. And so if we pray like that, then we are following this verse. We are wholeheartedly chasing after Krishna. And chasing after Krishna means the success of life. And Krishna wants to be caught by his devotee, but he is not so easily caught. He's only caught by, as Krishna, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, only by unalloyed, only by unalloyed devotional service can I be known as I am, standing before you and thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you under, understand the mysteries of my understanding. And so in that verse from the 11th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, verse 54, he says, yeah, only by undivided devotional service can I be known standing before you and thus be seen directly. Yeah. Only by, can I, and I stand before in this, only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. Yeah, so here is the, here's the verse. Krishna can be only stood only by the process of God. And so if we make these prayers that, yes, my dear Lord, you know, I've been trying, I've been so many lives, I've been chasing after you. Now I've got a good chance. I'm in a good position. Now I'm going to make this life successful. And therefore, let me give up whatever I don't need and let me take on whatever I need in order to come to the platform of serving you with complete attention and devotion. And it's not something so difficult. It's a matter of desire. Once the desire becomes strong, then Krishna will also, you, in our attempt to catch Krishna, Krishna is also giving us ways or helping us 
understand what we need to do. And he's not only telling you what to do, need to do, but he's actually doing certain things that makes it easier for you to uh, come to the platform of pure devotional service. That's Krishna. And the essence of that is to become attached to chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. It's not a matter of just chanting Hare Krishna. We have to come to the platform of actually developing an attachment for chanting that we should look forward to chanting. We should always be thinking, I should be chanting more. I want to chant more. I want to chant with more attention, with more devotion. Uh, so these desires, uh, sometimes devotees feel a little reluctant to make these prayers and desires because they know that uh, sometimes, not sometimes, but in the past, in our early days of Krishna consciousness, devotees would join and they would be very enthusiastic. And then, then they would, you know, do everything in the best possible way, getting up early, chanting, dancing, uh, serving, um, following the process with complete enthusiasm. And then they would think, my dear Lord, please, whatever is left, please take, take it away from me. I want to become your pure devotee. And then what happens, Krishna starts fulfilling their desire and they get a little bit nervous when they start seeing how Krishna is taking their attachments away. And then they start to retreat in the process of devotional service. So we should be ready and at the same time be happy because there's nothing in this material world that can satisfy the soul, only Krishna. <laughs> okay, I'll stop here and we'll see, we'll uh, open it up for comments and questions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful, beautiful class Maharaj. Thank you for your association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, we request the devotees if they'd like to turn on their cameras. That is always very, makes it very personal when we can see the devotees who are there. Yeah. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. It's so good to see you. Thank you for such a beautiful class. I really appreciate your comments about basically what you were saying was just surrender to Krishna and become attached to the holy name. So thank you so much. Hey, Krishna, thank you. <laughs> yes, that is the process. Very wonderful class, Prabhuji. You said it is short, but it is very, very... Uh, what you call uh, strong and we have to take these lessons to throughout of life. So, so nice Prabhuji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you Bali. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yes. Uh, Prabhupada would speak like this all the time. Practically all his lectures are like this. So I'm just trying to say something yeah, a few droplets of what Prabhupada would use, he says in his lectures. <laughs> he usually teaches us that Krishna is everything. This is what you're looking for. And this material world can never give you any kind of peace or satisfaction. We That's can see his reflection in you, Prabhupada. Yeah, we can always re, uh, see Prabhupada's reflection in you, Maharaj. We, we feel he is right in front of us. He is talking to us in your words. Well, I listened to Prabhupada, so maybe I said something that he said. <laughs> yeah. We are so blessed, Maharaj. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, you are saying that um, uh, we have to pray that I should chant more, I have to surrender more. Um, but uh, sometimes it is just material. Krishna, please uh, make me, you know, devotee, make me able to chant. It's just like, you know, just to, to say that. Uh, but um, in, in, I feel like sometimes, are we saying from our, out of our heart? And are we really wanted that? Um, because after some time, after the class is over, again, we are immersed in our material things. Only the association time, we yeah. are okay. Yeah, there's a thing called Samsa, Samsana Vairagya. Smasana means graveyard. Yeah, and then so you you go to the funeral and you see, you know, you, your friend or relative or somebody you know has now passed away, and you're there, and it's a very it's a ceremony for the departure of the of the of the person, and then you start becoming very serious about life. And you start making promises in your mind that you will become more serious now. But then when you leave, it's smasana vairagya. You forget all about it and you go back to your same old ways again. <laughs> so therefore, we have to hear regularly from Srila Prabhupada and his devotees so we can stay reminded and that reminding will keep us focused on the goal of life. Uh, we want to get so absorbed in serving Krishna that uh, this material world no longer becomes even noticeable. We have to take care of our body. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was an example of that. He would forget to take care of his body because he was so absorbed in thinking of Krishna and expressing his love for Krishna. We may not come to that stage of, of, that, of that, that high level of devotion, but we can become absorbed in serving Krishna and making everything we do a service to Krishna and become absorbed in that. Not wasting any time with things that have no meaning in life. I mean, I'm not saying you don't take care of your body or don't take care of your responsibilities on the, on the material level, but we have to learn to connect those to Krishna also and make them an offering to Krishna. And then Bhakti Vinodakor's prayer, which we recited earlier, Amanaso Deho Geho, Yokichi Mo Arpilu to Alpade Nanda Kishma. Well, that's that's the prayer that he's saying everything that I have belongs to you. <laughs> so you know I'm so I'm just simply using it in your service. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Venita. Anyone else? <laughs> We have uh, Sri Devi there along with Tirti Kirti. Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you again for reminding us how important it is to surrender in bhakti. My question is what if we are aspiring for something that we think we need for de our devotional service? But it may actually be Maya catching us and making us think we need it when actually it is just something, you know, coming from our own desires. What do we, what do we need? Oh, I um, need a scooter. I need a house. I need this. I need that. And then I can do my service nicely. I can go to temple more easily. I mean, no. things like that. Even if you get these things, there's no guarantee you'll do your service more nicely. 
fact, it might even be more difficult. Because <laughs> devotional service is not dependent on anything external or material. Devotional service is an expression of the heart towards Krishna. That's all. Yeah. So, you know, Bhakti Thakur mentions that when he gives, he speaks about Rupa Goswami's, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, verse in the Nectar of Instructions that uh, Atyahara Prayasa. Prayasa means um, uh, unnecessarily uh, making arrangements on a material level simply to engage devotional service. But he might say like, okay, you need to distribute books. So you have to get some books. So otherwise, how can you distribute books if you don't have any books? So there's some little prayasa there. Okay. If you want to distribute prasadam, you have to cook it first. So there's a little prayasa there, a little endeavor. But in it, in it up itself, bhakti has no no need for any anything external. So, so when we tell serving, ourselves, you can, I need you this. Serve, I need if, that. That is just need, Maya. If you want, if if, uh, if you need certain things to uh, serve in a certain way, it doesn't mean you you stop your service where you are now, and then only when you get that can you serve. That's that's the illusion. You, your service is not dependent on these things, but if you if if you if these things are required to serve in a particular way, and has been improved by your spiritual master, then you can endeavor to get these things. But it's not that now I can serve and before I can serve. No, you can serve always. Mm. Thank yeah. you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, and in do like may brought that out what what did she write yeah one's devotional service is spoiled by these six things and the second one is prayasa i need this i have to have this no krishna all you need is the desire to, to serve krishna that's the only thing you need <laughs> And you can do, you can serve without, without anything. <laughs> you can have nothing and you can serve pure, you can serve pure devotional service. But if we want to serve in a certain way, then those arrangements are made, but don't depend on the arrangements for the success of the service. It's the mood of service that makes the, the offering uh, uh, acceptable. So that's what we should be cultivating, the mood. And we get an opportunity to serve in this way or that way, we can do that. Yes, Guru Murad, thank you very much for the clarification. Like Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for that lovely lecture. So many good things in it. I'm very happy that I was here. Good. I'll see you in a few days. I'll be there. You'll be there? When will you come? I'll be there on Saturday afternoon. Saturday? This Saturday? Yeah. Oh, hooray. So you knew? Wonderful. She knew it. Yeah, she knew it. I just got here, Guru Maharaj. I was going to tell her. Okay. <laughs> any I'm other so comments? Happy. Or, any and other may, comments or may may questions? Stand. Let's see. Okay. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> Hey. 
Hare Krishna, dear devotees, is there any more questions for Maharaj? Yes, we want to wish a happy trip for Maharaj. Have a safe trip, Maharaj. We'll see you back in the yeah. next week. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I do have to. Actually, it's getting time when I have to depart. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. It's such a beautiful verse. This whole chapter that you're that you're now exploring is such a powerful chapter. It's just simply prayers. And it's prayers by great souls. Many great souls have offered prayers. And we can learn a lot from the prayers of the great souls. What is the actual mood of devotion simply by hearing their prayers. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll hope you. to see you in two weeks. Thank you, Maharaj, once again thank for, you, Maharaj, for your beautiful class and your association. Thank you so much. With your busy schedule, you came here and gave your association. Thank you, thank you so much. My obeisance is to you, Shamagori, who are the guru of. You know, no, 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 Maharaj. <laughs> Don't say. By, by her desire to bring Krishna consciousness to the uh, society, we have this long-term program that's been going on for the last nine years now. Amazing. All glories to you. All glories to you preaching Krishna consciousness. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you. So my obeisance is everyone wants to call back to Rishabha.